Hello everyone, welcome back to Microsoft Visual Basic for Clean Tutorials. Uh, last time we talked about uh, uh, variables and today we are going to review variables and talk about two controls, the group box and list box. And uh, what are we going to do is create a simple application to test all of these things. Okay, so right now uh, select file, a new project and this one we'll name it find area give it an ok save our project ok give it save ok come on come on come on well my computer is a little bit slow ok uh, we can see here that the form is called form 1 we don't want this so we will change the text property into something like uh, Calculate area. Okay, so this is calculate area. And now we want to calculate the area of square, and for this you need to know the length of that square. Uh, to do so, we are going to use a label, okay, and a text box to get this information. This will be uh, to ask for the length and the text box so I'm going to press T this is text box okay okay here and here change this one right length okay and we will enter the uh, here the actual length numbers okay uh, we will need another label to display, giving the, uh, to, to tell about the result. Okay, another text box. So another text box right here. Okay. Both same name. Okay, this one will be called the area. So we will change this text property into area. Okay, this one's text box two. This one's text box one. All we need now is uh, two things. First, the button that will that will have the code to calculate the area. Okay, this one compute. Okay. Uh, by the way, this text box should not be uh, changeable by the user, it will only display results. So, for that reason, we change the street only property into true. Okay, so you can see it right here. So, this will be our interface at the beginning before we change it. Okay, we will enter the number here, and the, when we press compute, we should get the result. So, let's go to compute. Now we are going to work with variables, so we are going to define one, dimension L as double. Uh, of course you can use integers, that is up to you, but L will uh, be safer for us, uh, sorry, double will be safer for us, since we might use real numbers, okay? And now, uh, dimension A has uh, double again, so now L equals text uh, text box one dot text this is the first text box we which uh, which we enter the, the the length into it a equals four by l okay now we calculated the area finally we're going to display the result and the result for that is the second text box we, we the one we modified uh, it's a uh, read only property uh, that one's called the uh, text box two dot uh, text box 2 and we will change this text property to BA. Now let's check our application right here. Okay, so this is our application. If we enter 10 and press compute, you should get 40 plus 2.2, compute with 10.8. So it's working perfectly fine. Okay, our next step is extending this one to compute the area of rectangle. Uh, right now we are just working a little bit with variables. We do, we don't want to um, let's say uh, we don't want to go into the controls per se. Now we will understand later on why I'm doing this. So copy these and paste them again. Okay. 
the problem about uh, rectangle is, is that it, it has uh, uh, width and height. So this one will be width. Okay. Width. This is the width. And this is the height. Sorry. Uh, this will be used to compute the uh, spread area. So copy these, paste them again. I'm using the easy way here. Okay. So click this one. This one will be the height. G I G H T. Okay. And finally, both of these are right here. Okay. Uh, in order to write the code for this one, of course, you should remember that these text boxes will have different names. This one is called text box 4, this one text box 5, and the last one is text box 3. Uh, you, you must remember uh, the names, or at least when you want to work with them, uh, you can just check them with the properties. Okay, so right now, again, just to repeat, this one, three, 4, 5, and 3. Uh, it, it, it depends on how, how you created these text boxes. If you, uh, you, uh, if you create each text box from here, they will be in, in the order you created them. Okay, so, so just check, you might find it a little bit different and because of that you might want to change your code. Okay, okay so now let's compute. And for this one, dimension width as uh, uh, double, dimension uh, height as double, and dimension A as double. And for this one, W equals text box um, for dot text, H equals text box five dot text, and the area equals W by H. Now we take the area, so we need only to display the results. So this one text box three dot text equals A. As simple as that. Save your work. And let's compute. Okay. So this one 10, this one is 20, and the result is 200. It's working perfectly fine. Uh, okay, uh, there's one uh, note about that. If you press the tab in order to move between the controls, you can see that the controls does not follow a logical order. And to fix this problem, there's something called a tab property. Okay, so uh, you click the first control and you can check the tab index. You can see this one is uh, it's holding number one. Uh, this one we want it to be the second in the order, so you just write number two, enter. And after that, you want to go to the compute as the last one, and this one will be number three. Okay, now uh, we will put the tabs right here. 5, 6, 7, and then 8. So here will be number 5. Okay, next one, tab index number 6. And this one, 7. And the last one is number 8. Okay, fun. Application. Now, when you press tabs, you can see it first it goes to the text boxes in the order, and and then, for example, for the square case, it will go to the first text box, second text box, then to the command button. For the rectangle, first text box, second text box, third text box, then to the compute button. Okay. Um, okay. So now, uh, this is just a little tweak uh, to make it more professional, more. Uh, more logical in its uh, navigation. Uh, one last thing is to 